Pattern matching, certainly the most interesting new feature in the new Python 3.10 release. And in this video, you will learn everything about it. It is pretty simple to understand, but it also comes with a lot of different code syntax options. So now we're going to have a look at all of them. We start with the basic syntax and then have a look at all the different details. So at the end of this video, you should truly be a master of this new pattern matching feature. And now let's get started. The basic syntax is pretty easy. You use the match keyword and the case keyword and can then match a variable against different values. For each matched case, you can then perform a certain action. In the simplest case, like here, we match against simple values, but you can also use complex patterns and you will see what I mean in a few moments. We can also match against multiple values in one line using the pipe operator. Compared to other programming languages, it is important to note that here we don't fall through all cases. For example, the value 400 here prints only bad requests. In other languages like C++, this would then fall through all cases and also print all other statements, unless we use a break statement, but we don't need this here in Python. A single underscore is used as the wildcard. This means if none of the above patterns matches, the wildcard action is performed. This is optional, so you can also omit it and then nothing at all happens if no match is found. Patterns can look like unpacking assignments and the pattern may be used to bind variables. In this example, we match a tuple here and the data point can be unpacked to its x and y coordinate. We can then use the bound variable in the execution statement. If you are using classes to structure your data, you can use as a pattern the class name followed by an argument list that matches the arguments from the constructor. This pattern has the ability to capture class attributes into variables. We can use positional arguments if, for example, we use a built-in data class that provides an ordering for the attributes, then all these patterns with positional arguments or keyword arguments are equivalent. Patterns can be nested. For example, if our data is a short list of points, it could be matched like this. Here we match against different possible lists. A wildcard can not only be used as last case statement, but also in more complex patterns such as tuples. In this example, the status variable matches against all tuples with an error, a code and then any arbitrary status number. We can add an if clause to a pattern known as a guard and if the guard is false, the match goes on to try the next case block. Sequence patterns also support wildcards. This star rest in the tuple or list works similar to wildcards in unpacking assignments. So these examples match a sequence of at least two items and then binds all the remaining items to the rest. The name after the star may also be an underscore if you don't need to bind the remaining items. Similar to sequences, we can also match mappings. In this example, it captures the bandwidth and latency values from a dictionary. But here, unlike sequence patterns, extra keys are ignored. A wildcard with double asterisks is also supported, but double asterisks and the underscore would be redundant, so this is not allowed. Of course, we can also match against enums using the full dotted name, like so. And the last feature I show you is that subpatterns can be captured using the as keyword. In this example, it binds x1, y1, x2 and y2 like you would expect without the as clause. And it also binds p2 to the entire second item. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Just one more word of warning, so I really like this new feature, but don't overuse it. In many examples, like in this one, a simple if else statement will do just fine. And that's all for today. If you also want to learn more about the other Python 3.10 features, you can check out this video. And then I hope to see you next time. Bye.